I'm thinking about two or three people in the Bible I like to talk about. You know, those miracles in the Bible were put there for us. And uh, many of you, you're, you're, you're sitting there and you're saying, my, look how my life has turned out. I wish I hadn't have done this. I wish I wasn't in this mess. I wish I was a different kind of a person. Well, the good news is, is there's a possible you in there. The possible you. Many people don't realize the possibilities that God sees in them. The possible you. God sees more in you than you can realize. Oh, I tell you, somebody said that, well, scientists tell us we don't use one-tenth of our brain power. One, not one-tenth of our brain power. Well, that's a possibility uh, just in the natural. You've heard of people, you know, that in an emergency, I, I read an article where a, a woman picked up a car that was on her child and lifted that car in that emergency, and there was no way she could lift a one-tenth of that weight, one one-hundredth of that weight. Yet in an emergency, she did that. You see, there's possibilities even in the natural. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about when the Son of God, Jesus of Nazareth, touches you and changes your life. He sees the possibilities in your life. Now, let me give you one or two illustrations here. Here's a woman. She's living in the Bible days, and she's in her house, and she's tormented, and her name is Mary Magdalene. She has seven demons inside of her going in and out and talking and tormenting, and, and, and she's the talk of the town. Can't you imagine people talking about, oh, crazy Mary? Well, you know people full of demons, you know they'll talk about like that. I don't know what all she did, but maybe one was an unclean demon. Well, uh, another kind of a demon. Another, maybe one was a lying demon. And maybe, I don't know what her reputation was, but everybody knew she had demons in her. And uh, if you'd pass by there one day and say, well, hello, oh, crazy Mary. Hello, lunatic. Hello, nobody. You'll never amount to anything in the world. That's the way the world talks. The world has looked at you and said, no, there's not any use to go in that direction. Nobody there. Nobody there. Nobody do, do anything for them. Just say goodbye forever. Oh, I'm telling you, just write people off. Write people off. Let me tell you something. Jesus never writes people off. Never write people off if you're going to let Jesus have his way in their life. Oh, let's go down and see old crazy Mary and see what she's doing in her house. She's got demons in her. But I want you to know that Jesus saw something in her that nobody else. She is, but she shall be. I'm talking about the possible you. I'm talking about not what you are, but what you can become. You may be an alcoholic. You may be a gambler. You may be a prostitute. You may be a, a, a whirling. You may be on drugs. It's not what you are. It's what you can become. Yeah. When he touches your life, everybody shout, Jesus is the answer. Jesus is the answer. Well, Jesus looked at Mary and he saw. He didn't see a demon-possessed person. He said, I can take care of that. The Bible said he cast seven demons out of Mary. Oh, I can imagine the day he cast those demons out of Mary. Man alive, suddenly her mind clears. Let me tell you something. Would you ever dream that that demon-possessed woman would ever amount to anything in life? Do you know that she was the first one Jesus ever appeared to? She was the first one that preached the, uh, a message under the new covenant? She was the first one that went out to tell that he is not dead, but he is alive? This woman was a mighty servant of God. It's not what you are. It's what you can become. I think about that other demoniac. Now, he had 6,000 demons in him. Now, let me pause to say this. If that much of the devil can get in you, think about how much of God can get in you. I want to say that again. Enlarge your capacity. You say, well, I, I got all there is. I got all there is. I don't need any more God. Let me tell you something. If 6,000 demons can get inside you, a whole lot of God can get inside of you. Now, this man was, you, most of you know, it's Mark chapter 5. He was a demoniac, had 6,000 demons in him. And here he is. Now, you pass by, you know what you'd see? A man tearing his clothes off. The Bible said no man could tame him. He'd tear his clothes off. And they'd chain him. And he lived in the graveyard. And uh, uh, the demons like to be among the dead, you see. Now, here he is, uh, chained to a tree. He, he cuts himself with stones, the Bible says. His body is bloody. His mind is all confused. There he stands. There he sits. Then he breaks the chains and in great fury runs down through the town, terrorizing the town. Would you say, uh, well, you know, uh, that's going to be my next pastor? Would you say that? <laughs> you know, you know that's, uh, that's one of the great men of God of our day. Would you ever say that? 
Would anybody, oh my, you know what they'd say? Write him off, write him off, write him off. I'm telling you, Jesus never writes anybody off. He hasn't written you off. I don't care. I see a mother by the Spirit of God. I see you so discouraged. A mother and a wife there. You're alone and you, you're so discouraged with those children. You don't know what to do. I'll tell you, Jesus does not write you off. He never writes you off. No matter how far in sin you go, how many times you've disappointed him, how many times uh, that you have failed him, he never writes you off. Could I have an amen? amen. Now here's this demoniac full of 6,000 demons, running without clothes, chained and then breaking the chains, terrorizing the town. Is there anybody who would ever think anything could become of that man? Oh, I tell you, when you think about Jesus, don't ever write anybody off. There's no case too hard for Jesus. He can break the power of divorce. He can break the power of a broken home. He can break the power of heroin. He can break the power of crack. He can crack crack out of your life. He can drive the power of the devil out of you. Thank God. Do you know what happened to this man? He became a preacher, and Jesus sent him to ten towns, the Decapolis. He became a preacher over those ten towns. How did it happen? Jesus saw what the possibility in him. He didn't see a demon-possessed man. He didn't see a failure. He didn't see somebody bound uh, beyond hope. He didn't see that. He saw somebody who could go out and preach the gospel. And Jesus crossed that sea and cast those 6,000 demons out of him. And the Bible says when the crowds of the town came out, they found him sitting and clothed at the feet of Jesus in his right mind. Hallelujah. And he said to Jesus, let me go with you. And Jesus said, no, I don't want you to go with me. Go back. Go back home and tell what great things the Lord has done for you. And he went to the Decapolis, which means ten towns, and he became the preacher for those ten towns. It's not what you are, it's what you can become. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a hand clap. Give him a hand clap. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know... Uh, I heard about a, I heard about a story about an eagle that was captured as a little, as a little eaglet, you know, and uh, they put it in the, uh, put a, some around its uh, uh, foot, you know, and held it down with a string and put it in with the chickens, and uh, it walked around, and uh, the chickens would bend down, it'd bend down, and that, that that eagle just stayed down there just like a chicken. He thought he was a chicken, and so he just went on and on and on like that, you know. But something inside of his little breast begin to look up at the skies and say, my, I don't know what it is, but I don't, I, I don't feel like these other chickens down here. I just don't feel like, I don't even look like these other chickens down here. But, uh, but you know, I, I must be a chicken. Everybody around me is a chicken. I, I, I must be a chicken. I'm, in a, I, I, I'm among chickens, so I know I must be a chicken. And so he just kept on pecking at the dirt like the chickens and pecking at the uh, corn and pecking at this, you know. And every once in a while, he'd see an eagle go by there. Man, he said, I look like I'm kin to him, but, but uh, I'm a chicken. I'm a chicken. I must be a chicken. I live among chickens. And so I've got a chicken mentality, you know. And so he just, he had, just had to stay down there. Uh, but some one day got to feeling his wings on side, you know, begin to stretch those wings out. He said, my, he said, I, I feel like I'm more than a chicken, but I must be a chicken. I must be a chicken, you know, uh, because I live among, all I remember is chickens. And, you know, and so, I, uh, but uh, what about these things? One day he decided to act like something beside a chicken. He jumped up on a post. He stretched those wings. He began to move. Something began to stir on the inside of him, and directly he took off. And he caught an updraft, and he began to soar. And way up there, he looked down at those chickens. He said, thank God I'm not a chicken. I'm an eagle. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. They'll give the Lord a hand. Well, God sees every one of you as an eagle. What are you doing walking around with a bunch of chickens? I'll tell you in a bunch of turkeys. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm telling you, we need to realize that when he says we can do it, we can do it. When he says we are, we are. When he says we can become, we can become. It's not what you are. It's what Jesus can make you. Thank God. He says, you are Simon, but you shall be. You shall be. Not, not, not a shifting sand, but you will be like a rock. You'll be like a rock. And Jesus took that man, and he, he changed him. 
He saved him. He wrote part of the Bible. He became one of the great apostles of, of the Bible days. Thank God it's not what you are, it's what you can become. When Jesus touches you, all things change. Now let me talk to you heart to heart. What are you today? Where does this telecast find you? Where does this service find you? You see, don't get caught up in what you are. That's not the ultimate. That's not the end. It's never too late for Jesus. It's never too late for Jesus. Everybody say it with me. It's never too late for Jesus. Say it again. It's never too late for Jesus. It doesn't matter how far down you have fallen. It doesn't matter how many mistakes you have made. You say, well, I, I don't count anymore. There's nobody that could ever use me. Don't mark yourself off because God has not marked you off. You have possibilities, the possible you. What's in that rock? What's in that drunkard? What's in that prostitute? What's in that gambler? What's in that, uh, that businessman that's cheated and, and, and lost his, uh, his integrity? What's in that person? What's in that? What's in that rock? When God looks at the rock of your life, he sees not an angel. He sees a son a daughter of the living God who has eternal life and peace and joy and in eternity ruling and reigning with him forever and forever and forever. Some of you say, well, I've never heard anything like this before. I didn't know anything could ever happen to me. But Jesus has passed your way. He's looked into your eyes. He's looked into your life. And he said, I'm going to change everything about you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. I challenge you to let him into your life. And when he comes in, the devil goes out, and God will make you what you were destined to be in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap.